we have been looking at uh, various examples of uh, analyzing uh, the notion of convexity, concavity of functions of one variable and its applications to economics <coughs> and commerce. Uh, we will start today with uh, an, an example, uh, we will discuss it completely and try to see what uh, we can deduce about the function. So, the function uh, is given as follows. So, f of x is given as absolute value of x multiplied by 1 minus x for x belonging to the interval minus 1 to 2. So, the domain of the function is the closed bounded interval minus 1 to 2 and the function is defined as the absolute value of x multiplied by 1 minus x. So, uh, for such a function you should observe that if x belongs to minus 1 to 2, then x could be negative or x could be positive. And here is the uh, formula for the function which involves absolute value. And we know that the absolute value of a real number uh, is the number itself if the number is positive and it is minus of the number if the number is negative. So, the this value will change according as the uh, where is x. So, let us assume x is between 0 and 1 because is 1 minus x that is going to cause a problem. So, if x is between uh, 0 and 1 then um, x is positive and 1 minus x also is positive. So, that will mean that the product x into 1 minus x is positive. So, the function will be defined as x into 1 minus x for x between 0 and 1. If x is outside say x is between minus 1 and 0 then x will be negative and if x is bigger than 1 uh, bigger than 1 and less than 2 then again uh, 1 minus x will be negative. So, both the terms x and 1 minus x are going to be negative when um, it belongs to um, uh, between 1 and 2. So, uh, the value of the function would be minus x into 1 minus x. So, uh, this is the function is defined differently between 0 and 1 and differently between uh, 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 minus 1 to 0 and 1 to 2. So, depending on whether the product is positive or negative it is uh, differently defined. So, uh, we uh, uh, this is the composite this is the uh, uh, formula given we expand it as uh, for the interval 0 to 1 we write it as x into 1 minus x because both x uh, and 1 minus x will be positive. And when x is between this or this if x is between uh, uh, this interval then uh, the product will be negative and so is minus of uh, that thing right. So, uh, accordingly uh, we will uh, analyze the function. So, first of all the function is continuous because in the interval 0 to 1 it is a continuous function. In the interval this portion also separately it is continuous function only we have to bother about the point uh, at 0 and at the point 1. At the point 0, if we look at the values coming from the left of 0 from here, then the value will be 0 times 1 minus x that is like a 0. And similarly, if you are coming from the right side, then also the value is 0. So, um, it is continuous at the point 0 and similarly, we can um, verify that it is continuous at the point 1 also. So, this is a function which is continuous everywhere between minus 1 and 2. Um, claim is that this function is not differentiable uh, at the points uh, 0 and 1. So, uh, to analyze that one has to compute the left derivative at 0 and the right derivative uh, at 0 and similarly left derivative at 1 and the right derivative at 1. So, let us compute this and check that the claim is true that the function is not differentiable at uh, the points. So, let us look at the function. So, f of x we want to know is it is it differentiable at x is equal to 0. So, to find that let us try to compute what is going to be the left hand derivative at the point 0. So, by definition this is limit h going to 0. So, f of 0 minus h let us take h positive minus f at 0 divided by h. 
So, when you take 0 minus h, you are on the left side of 0. So, you are computing this limit on the left side of 0. So, let us compute this. So, this is limit h going to 0, h bigger than 0. Uh, what is f of 0 minus h? 0 minus h will be a point in minus 1 to 0. So, it will be given by minus h 1 minus h that is the value of the function minus f at 0 is 0 divided by h. So, this comes out to be uh, h cancels. So, this is equal to limit h going to 0 of minus 1 plus h. So, that limit we know is equal to minus 1. So, the left hand derivative at 0 is equal to minus 1. Let us compute the right hand derivative at the same point. So, we want to compute f dash plus at 0. So, that will be equal to limit h going to 0. We want to be on the right side of 0. So, f of 0 plus h, h positive minus f at 0 divided by h. So, for that let us compute what are the values. So, h going to 0, h bigger than 0. At 0 plus h that means the function is on the right side of 0. So, it will be in the interval 0 to 1. So, the value is h 1 minus h minus f at 0 is 0 divided by h. So, that is equal to limit h going to 0, h bigger than 0 of this h cancels with this. So, this is just 1 minus h. So, that is equal to 1. So, uh, we saw that the left hand derivative was equal to minus 1, the right hand derivative is 1. So, the left hand derivative f at minus 0 that is equal to minus 1 is not equal to 1 which is equal to f dash plus at 0. So, that means the function this proves that the function is not uh, differentiable at the point 0. A similar calculation uh, you should try and prove that it is not differentiable at x equal to 1 also. So, this function which is given by mod x into 1 minus x mod of uh, x into 1 minus x in the interval minus 1 to 2 is continuous everywhere. It is not differentiable at the points 0 and 1. Let us compute the derivative of this function wherever it is differentiable. It is differentiable in the open interval 0 1 and the derivative will be um, x minus x square. So, derivative will be 1 minus 2 x. So, that is the derivative um, in the interval 0 to 1. So, once we have the value of the derivative uh, in this interval, we can also compute the derivative uh, in the other part of the domain. So, in this the formula is minus x into 1 minus x. So, if x lies between the open interval minus 1 to 0 or the open interval 1 to 2, then the derivative will be equal to minus 1 plus 2 x. So, from this it comes minus 1 plus 2 x in these two parts of the interval in these two intervals. So, now um, to find out what are the points of local maxima minima, one can uh, put derivative equal to 0. So, if you put this derivative equal to 0 in the interval 0 to 1, we get x is equal to 1 by 2. And uh, in this, if you put uh, this again gives you x equal to 1 by 2, but that is not part of this domain anyway. So, the only critical point is x is equal to 1 by 2. And one can easily check uh, that uh, at the point uh, 1 by 2, the second derivative at the point 1 by 2, we can look at the second derivative. So, at the point 1 by 2, the function in this interval derivative is 1 minus 2 x. So, second derivative will be equal to minus 2. So, uh, the point x is equal to 1 by 2 is a critical point and the second derivative at that point is minus 2 less than 0. So, that gives you that x is equal to 1 by 2 is a point of local maximum. We can also analyze the nature of the derivative on the left and on the right of uh, uh, this, point, this point that we know and already, but let us analyze the uh, nature of the derivative in all the parts of the domain. So, derivative if uh, is between 0 and 1, the derivative is equal to 1 minus 2 x. So, that will be positive that means 1 is bigger than 2 x. So, this will be uh, bigger than 0 if x is between 0 and half and uh, it will be negative if it is between uh, 1 by 2 and 1. So, that means the function will be uh, increasing on the left side of half from 0 to 1 by 2 
and decreasing on the right side of 1 by 2 to 1. We can do a similar analysis. Uh, so, f is increasing in the interval 0 to half and decreasing in the interval half to 1. We can do a similar analysis for uh, the other parts of the uh, domain. So, namely in minus 1 to 0 and 1 to 2, we know the derivative is minus 1 plus 2 x. So, that will be bigger than 0. That means what? That means 2 x is bigger than 1. Right? So, in this portion uh, this is going to be positive and it is going to be less than 0 in minus 1 to 0. So, uh, from the nature of the derivative we deduce that the function should be uh, increasing in uh, 1 to 2 and should be decreasing in minus 1 to 0. So, these are the conclusions uh, we draw from the looking at the derivative, the sign of the derivative. So, once that is done, we know increasing, decreasing, we can look at the second derivative of the function. So, the second derivative of the function is equal to 2 if x is between minus 1 to 0 or the portion 1 to 2 and it is negative if x is between 0 and 1. So, it is strictly concave up in the interval uh, minus 1 to 0 and uh, 1 to 2 because of uh, the derivative is strictly bigger than 0 and strictly concave down in the portion 0 to 1. So, this is a uh, properties that we deduce for the derivative function by looking at uh, uh, about the conca concavity and convexity of the function by looking at the derivative of the second derivative of the function. So, once that is done, we can also look at uh, uh, strictly concave up in this portion and uh, on the left of 0 and on the right of 1. So, it is changing its nature from strict concavity to convexity, uh, strict uh, con convexity to concavity at 0 and from concavity to convexity at x is equal to 1. And it is also continuous at these points. So, these are the points of inflection. So, f has points of inflection at uh, 0 and 1. So, all this data can be combined together uh, to plot uh, a graph of the function. So, let us see what the graph looks like. So, this is uh, first of all uh, to, uh, to draw the graph, it is advisable to look at the interval domain that is the interval minus 1 to 2. In that portion, look at the intervals where the derivative if it exists is bigger than 0 and less than 0. So, uh, we have looking at the sign of the derivative function. So, we get minus 1 to uh, 0 the derivative is less than 0 and uh, in the portion 0 to half the derivative is strictly bigger than 0. In uh, half to 1 the derivative is strictly less than 0 and in the portion uh, 1 to 2 the derivative is strictly bigger than 0. So, uh, once this data is um, available in this form we can see that in this green portion the function should be decreasing. In this uh, red portion the function should be in uh, increasing. Again the derivative is less than 0. So, in this green portion the function should be decreasing and in the red portion derivative is bigger than 0. So, the function should be uh, increasing here. So, decrease it is decreasing, it is increasing, it is decreasing, it is increasing. So, uh, that uh, indicated that the point, uh, point 0.5 that is half at this point there should be a uh, local maximum for the function. For the second derivative, when we plot the signs, uh, the, what is the sign of the second derivative? It is less than or equal to, uh, the second derivative is strictly less than 0 in the interval 0 to uh, minus 1 to 0. So, that means the function is uh, concave, uh, concave up right, and concave down and so on. So, this uh, data can be uh, plotted uh, for the function uh, and we can plot a function this way. So, uh, in this portion uh, derivative is less, so it is concave down, uh, right? it is concave up and so on. So, this is the graph of the function by looking at the various properties of the function. So, that is how the graph is uh, drawn. So, it should be clear um, what is the process for uh, sketching a curve or sketching a function. 
Let us look at uh, uh, slightly more uh, uh, ideas about calculus, uh, how they are applied to plotting the function or analyzing the functions. Let us analyze a small business uh, um, which invests rupees uh, 5000 in a new product. In addition to the initial investment, the product cost is 0 0.50 per unit to produce it costs. So, that is the uh, cost per unit that is being uh, in. So, to produce each unit one has to invest uh, 0 0.50. Okay. So, let us see uh, what we are trying to do in this if you want to find out what is the average cost function. So, we want to find out what is the average cost per unit question is find the average cost per unit when 1000 units are produced or when uh, 10,000 units are produced what is the average cost and what is the average cost when the, uh, the number of units produced becomes very, very large. So, if we keep on increasing the number of units produced, what is the behavior of the average cost of the production. So, to find that let us first write down what is the uh, average cost function. So, the average cost function uh, we know is defined by uh, invested money is uh, 500. right? So, uh, number of units being produced uh, very, very large. So, we want to find out the average cost of producing uh, uh, it should be x actually here or one should write q here because the variable is denoted by q. So, uh, this 5000 um, invested okay, and uh, 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 x is the number of units or q or x. So, here q is equal to x is the number of units being produced and 0.5 per unit to produce. So, uh, 0.5 per unit that gives you additional average cost of half per unit. right? So, uh, so, this is the average cost function for the production of uh, that uh, whatever, uh, whatever unit is being whatever product is there. So, for this uh, you know that to for this product function if you just want to calculate what is the average cost for 1000 you put the value x is equal to 1000 or q equal to 1000. So, average cost at 1000 will be so this is 1000 so that is 5000 plus uh, uh, 0.5 uh, and at 1000 it will be equal to 1. So, that is average cost so that is only just plugging in the values q equal to 1000 or x is equal to 1000 and 10000. Now, we want to compute what happens see if we look at the average cost function uh, then as the number of units being produced increases. So, if this x is increasing then it is 1 over 5000 divided by x. So, this will be uh, decreasing. So, average cost so you can already uh, um, see that for 1000 it was 5.5 and for 10000 it came down to 1. So, if you keep on producing more uh, number of uh, units the average cost keeps on coming down. So, that is the uh, conclusion that we get from here. So, average cost is becoming smaller and smaller and this will be this quantity will become smaller and smaller and uh, if this very if x is very very large this quantity becomes very very small. So, the average cost comes closer to the value 2 it, it will never become equal to 2 because uh, that is not possible mathematically. So, we can bring it as close to 2 uh, half as you want it right. right. So, this is written mathematically as the average cost of producing q units as q becomes infinity is equal to 2. This is only a symbolic way of writing uh, that as q becomes very, very large this value of the function average cost comes closer and closer to the value 2. So, this is only q is not equal to infinity do not make that mistake of saying that q is equal to infinity and something divided by infinity should be 0. That is a wrong uh, uh, way of saying things you cannot divide by infinity. So, uh, because infinity is a number not a number anyway. So, a mathematical way of saying that as you increase q a c the average cost is decreasing and is approaching the value 1 by 2. So, this is what this, this symbolic representation of that is. So, uh, 
And let us observe something more that when you look at the first derivative of the average cost function that does uh, average cost was 5000 divided by x plus half. So, the derivative is minus 5000 by x square which is less than 0 whatever be x it is less than 0. Uh, here keep in mind x is same as q this is a variable which is uh, not typed properly on the right hand side it should be q or it should be written as x here. And the second derivative of this will be equal to uh, this minus 2 goes up. So, that is plus 2 into 2 into 5000 divided by x cube and for all x bigger than 0 or q bigger than 0 this is also bigger than 0. So, what does that indicate? That means that the, uh, um, the average cost function that is f. So, here uh, this a c is denoted by f. So, the average cost function is decreasing and uh, it is always positive. So, that is uh, concave up function. So, one can uh, look at uh, strictly decreasing and concave up function. So, let us look at uh, the graph of this function it looks like this. So, this is the graph of the function the average cost function right and this is this line red line is a line which is y equal to 1 by 2. So, this is the y line y equal to 1 by 2. So, this value uh, of the function okay, as you become smaller and smaller this will become uh, okay. So, average cost function the here it is a minus 1 by 2. So, as x becomes large and large right it will become 1 by 2. So, we can sh show it dia uh, dynamic geometry software uh, the value if you like uh, how this uh, is happening. Basically the idea is that uh, this function will become the value of the function becomes smaller and smaller. So, this is uh, ok. So, this is the graph and at the value when b is equal to 3 right at the point b when the value x is equal to 3. Uh, this is here is a minus sign here. So, which can be uh, corrected. <clears throat> so, if I move uh, the point you see if I move the point if q becomes larger and larger the value is becoming smaller and smaller. Okay. So, this is indicating that the value is becoming smaller and smaller. Okay. So, that is the value becoming. So, you can see the value is changing here. So, as you if you are closer to 0 it is increasing right you are coming and if you are going this side then it is decreasing. So, this is a dynamic way of looking at it, but it should be obvious from the graph that as you go on the right side this value of the function will decrease and it will approach the value 1 by 2. So, we want to um, make this notion precise. So, let us uh, define what is called an asymptote for a function of one variable. So, let f be a function uh, defined in a domain uh, a and uh, given by y equal to f of x. So, another way of writing f colon a to r be f be a function one just write sometimes let uh, y equal to f x be a real valued function defined on a. That means, a is the domain of the function and x belongs to a and the values are y. So, we say that a line y equal to b is called a horizontal asymptote. So, it is called a horizontal asymptote on the left of y equal to f on the left of the function if as you approach minus infinity x goes to minus infinity f of x approaches b. So, f of x is the value that is y. So, y is approaching b. So, the line y equal to b. So, as you approach minus infinity as x becomes minus infinity f of x is approaching b. So, y is becoming b. So, you say y equal to b is a horizontal line. So, you say y equal to b is a horizontal asymptote on the left side because you are going x going to minus infinity. So, so, horizontal asymptote on the left side of the graph uh, if the limit f x. So, as x becomes in infinity x becomes closer and closer to infinity that means x becomes larger and larger f x approaches the value b. So, this is what we are saying this symbolically says the graph approaches to the line y equal to b 
as we move keep closing to uh, to the fung value uh, to the uh, uh, as we keep moving on the left side of uh, x axis so this is called horizontal asymptote on the left similarly you can have a horizontal asymptote on the right the only difference will come is you are approaching uh, x is equal to plus infinity so horizontal asymptote on the right side of f of x if x going to plus infinity f of x is equal to b so as uh, you approach plus infinity as you go away and away on x axis your value f of x uh, becomes uh, b that is what happened in the previous example as the um, uh, uh, the average cost came closer and closer to the line uh, y equal to 2 uh, y equal to half so in the previous example you can say y equal to 2 is a horizontal uh, asymptote on the right side uh, we can also have what are called the vertical asymptotes. So, vertical meaning x, x is approaching some value. So, x is equal to a is called a vertical asymptote from the left at the point x is equal to a to the function if x goes to a from the left side, if you approach the value x is equal to a from the left side, the value y should become uh, very large, it should become plus infinity or minus infinity. That means, the value of y becomes very, very large or very, very small as x approaches a from the left side. And similarly, so the graph of the function approaches the vertical line as you approach x from the left uh, of the axis. And similarly, a uh, vertical asymptote from the right uh, as you approach the point a from the right side, the value of the function becomes larger and larger or l smaller and smaller. Uh, so, that is at same as saying f approaches the vertical line graphically f approaches the vertical line x is equal to a as x approaches the point a from the right side of the axis. So, vertical asymptote from left and right, horizontal asymptotes from uh, left and right. So, um, uh, why these are necessary? We saw an example that the average cost tends to become smaller and smaller, never becomes 0, but approaches the line x is equal to. So, asymptotes do play a role in uh, analyzing um, problems in economics and we will study some more examples in the next lecture. Thank you.